Now we're going to talk about absolute advantage and comparative advantage. <clears throat> we're all different. Some of us can do some things very, very well, and we can't do other things very well at all. Some people are good farmers, and other people just do not have a green thumb at all. Some people just gravitate to mathematics and graphs and stuff, and they just, it's, it's almost like they were born with it. It's almost like it's intuitive second nature to them. And other people just look at those numbers, and it just doesn't make any sense at all. And what does the X mean, and, and what's an equal sign? Oh, what is this all about? So some people can write essays like not, not really hard. I mean, you just write down what you're thinking, and it all comes out wonderfully. Other people just sweat bullets writing essays. Now, the point is that some, we're all different. We all have different capabilities innate. We've all been trained differently. And so some people, just like some nations, have an absolute advantage in the production of some goods in comparison to others. Some nations, like I'm thinking of Nigeria, uh, there's a oil that comes out of Nigeria, I think it's called Nigerian crude, that is so pure that it doesn't really need to go through much of a refining process at all. And you just pump it out and it's basically a marketable product in comparison to Russian crude, which has all this sulfur in it and has to go through a lot of processes before that's marketable. So Nigeria would have an absolute advantage in producing high quality barrels of oil in comparison to some place like Canada, which gets it out of the sand tar stuff, which is a lot more difficult to extract. So if your friend can write an essay in 15 minutes that takes you three hours, then that person has an absolute advantage. So we can see why trade would take place between somebody who has a great mathematical ability and somebody who has a great but no English ability, and the other person has great English ability but no mathematical ability. Well, they're going to trade off. If they work together as a team, they're going to get a whole lot more done and both going to get a higher score than if they just work at it individually because they can help each other out. It's called synergy. Now, there was a guy named David Ricardo I should say, an economist by the name of David Ricardo, who said, yes, that's all well and good. Absolute advantage is pretty straightforward, understandable. But actually, as much or more trade is done because of something called comparative advantage than absolute advantage. Actually, as much or more trade is done because of something called comparative advantage rather than absolute advantage. When we're talking about comparative advantage, the key term that sets it apart from absolute advantage is this term which we've already covered called opportunity cost. Now, let me give you an illustration of this. Um, I'm not really that big into sports, but I think I've heard the name Michael Jordan before. Have you? And he plays some game with some ball. Yeah, help me out. It's not basketball. Okay, good, good, good. It's just, I knew you knew, but you probably. Anyway, we all know it's basketball now. And he's good at it. Now, I'm going to make up a story that, if it's true, it would be news to me. But let's say that Michael Jordan grew up into a family whose father was a professional painter. He put paint on walls. I mean, it's good. And so after school, he'd come home and he'd help his dad paint. And on weekends, he'd help his dad paint. And of course, since he was quite an athlete, he was awfully good at that, simply because he's an athlete and because he's trained. Now, he buys one of his great big houses, right? Builds a brand new house. And who can paint that house more productively than about anybody else in the world. 
Michael Jordan. There's nobody that can match him in terms of quality and output. Now, David Ricardo says, but that doesn't mean he's going to paint his own house. Well, why not? He's the best at it. I mean, he could save the money, right? People can save money, even if you've got a lot of money, you still like to save it. And he could get the job done twice as fast as anybody else out there in the world. So why wouldn't he paint his own house? Because of something called comparative advantage. And I, I, I want you to keep this in mind in a practical business sense because you're thinking to yourself, well, um, other people can lay carpet maybe a little bit better than I can, or other people can sell windows cheaper than I can, or television sets or something. Well, whatever it is, you think, well, I, 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 I couldn't make a living at that because there's other people that are so much better at it than me. I've got to find something that I am better than everybody else. Don't think like that. Don't think like that. That's, where, that's the practical takeaway of where I'm going here. But why wouldn't Michael Jordan paint his own house? I mean, he's got an absolute advantage over everybody else. Well, think about it for a second. If he decides, could, could there be any possible reason that you would think that it is in his own best interest not to paint his own house? even though he's the world's best at it. How about he gets a phone call? You say, hey, we're coming out with these new uh, jogging outfits, <laughs> you know, and uh, would you be willing to put your name on them or, or be shown on television with them or do an interview about how these jogging outfits are really... We'll give you a free one <laughs> and then a couple hundred thousand dollars to do the interview. Could you come out and do that? No, I'm going to paint my house. What? Yeah, I'm going to save $15,000 by painting my own house. You're not going to come out and do a $100,000 interview and some royalties because you want to save $15,000? Yeah, I'm the world's best at it. Nobody can paint it better than me, so I'm going to paint my own house and save $15,000. Hmm, no. What would it be in his best interest to do? Hire some mediocre person who can't do it as fast as him, right? And hire that person. Now, that is called comparative advantage. Why does comparative advantage play into the market? Because of the opportunity costs that our basketball pro would be facing. Now, that he didn't face an accounting cost. Accounting-wise, he would be better off to save the 15000 But opportunity costs, which is not in any accounting statement, He'd be losing money if he paints his own house because he has to be giving up more, potentially more, than the amount he'd be saving by painting his house. So I wanted to point that out to give you the difference between absolute advantage and there are trades that happen because of absolute advantage. But David Ricardo pointed out that a lot more sort of trades, so sort of trades that you wouldn't even naturally think unless you thought about it for a second. Why would somebody who's very, very good at something not do it and let some other person or some other nation produce something that they're better at producing and do less of it and let somebody else who's not as good at it do it and import that, even though we're the very world's best at making wheat or coal or um, avocados or whatever it is, that we would not do that and we would let somebody who doesn't have an absolute advantage do that and trade with them. And the answer is because of comparative advantage.